Hello, hi, it's Paulina. And I'm Mike. And we're off grid Hawaii. And in today's video, we're gonna show you guys a tour of our food forest slash fruit orchard. We call it a food forest because it's a variety of different fruit producing plants. But also it is an orchard because there is some structure and organization to it. We are using some permaculture strategies to grow our trees with mulch crops and stuff like that. So it, it's a little bit of both. There's a lot of fruit trees, there's a lot of edible plants, there's a lot of gardens and stuff. So we'll just focus on the key things that you guys mentioned in the comments that you wanted to see. So back in March of 2016, when we first started moving into this land, um, it was all just pretty much um, a lot of native trees, ohia, uluhe fern, um, and a lot of the invasive trees that you find everywhere. Pretty much what your typical lot in Pune would look like that hasn't had any humans in it for many years. Yeah. So beginning in March of 2016, we started to plant trees on the land, clearing some of the land, um, and just kind of developing this whole food forest project that we have now. Three years later, we're definitely seeing a big, massive change in what the land was like. Yeah, and we're getting fruit on things we didn't think we'd get this fast like when we first started planting people said oh it takes about five years and we're actually getting fruit on some of those trees that were supposed to take five years but it's less mm -hmm. even three you know so what we would consider the major contributing factor to the success of the fruit trees that we have here is the county mulch it's oh. called the east hawaii organics the facility center. located out in hilo so for those of you that don't know what the county mulch is, it's basically everyone from this area brings their green waste to this place that throws it through a grinder and it goes uh, into a big pile after that and then it is turned and it sits there basically and decomposes. It's They call it enhanced mulch because it is sitting for a little while and that's to kill things like fire ants and uh, pathogens and stuff. So they give it about six weeks to sit there and process a little bit and then they give it out to the public. And um, recently I sat down with them over there and they really want to get more presence in the social media space. And they asked me if I could direct people to their Facebook. So if you guys could go check out their Facebook and I'll link it in the description. Um, that would really help them out um, a lot. And they had a lot of things come in in the future such as like tours of the facility and they're going to be making their own soil um, I'm not sure when probably a little bit later but they're working on the process of making soil which I think will probably be the best product as far as soil goes can't wait for that so definitely go check out their Facebook and like their page and actually give them a comment tell them you came there through us that would be awesome yeah, so having said that, let's get right into it and we're going to show you guys some cool trees. We will start with the mac nuts since it's right here and Blue has already started harvesting them. Alright, so we're going to start off with the macadamia nut trees. So this property is three acres um, spaghetti lot. When we first moved here, we discovered that approximately the first acre was already planted out um, orchard style with several macadamia nut trees spaced out about 20 feet apart in each direction. Um, now because the land was abandoned afterwards nobody took care of them a lot of the trees stayed pretty small didn't really grow that well um, but we try to save as many of them as we could and this one right here is our biggest one on the property and it is producing quite an abundance of macadamia nuts um, because it is September and they're in season right now. So there's a bunch on the ground um, from this tree, but also from several of the other smaller trees that we were able to kind of bring back into production after clearing around them and taking care of them. Put it in here. Look, put it in here. So right here we have one of our jackfruit trees, the black gold variety, it's grafted. It is located in our front orchard and 
The way we have laid out our orchard is we sort of have a front, middle, and back, and that helps with maintaining it. We'll assign, you know, say the front orchard for one month, the middle for the next month, and then the back for the next month. That really helps with spread out the work so we don't feel overwhelmed ever. And it seems to be working good so far. Uh, I get done with each section about midway through the month and then I have time to work at other people's property so it works out really good. So this jackfruit tree is one of the trees we planted on our second round in 2017. And you know we planted it thinking you know it's going to take a long time to produce the fruit. And actually come check this out. We have got ourselves a nice jackfruit. This is what they probably mean when they say low-hanging fruit. <laughs> it's just about on the ground. We got a little space and we've been monitoring it closely so that it doesn't rot. They call these black gold because supposedly they turn black when they're ripe and like they almost look like they're rotting, but that's when you know it's perfect. So we're not exactly sure when this is going to be ripe. I do know what they look like when they get ripe. I just don't know how long it takes because this is our first one. If anybody knows how long it takes jackfruit, leave that in the comments. That'll help us out. It's a learning process. Alright, so here we have our mangosteen tree. It is very small, so mangosteen grows really, really slowly. Um, and they have to start from seed. I heard, or I researched, and it says that it takes about 35 years from a mangosteen from seed to grow into a tree and produce fruit. So that's a very long time, but the fruit is delicious and will still hopefully be alive in 35 years now, like 32 years. So if you want something, you just gotta start it, even if it's gonna take a long time to um, see the results. Because if you never start, then you'll never see the results, um, which is a nice teaching moment with this particular plant. So unfortunately something ate some of the leaves of this beautiful tree. Um, just one, two, three, four, five leaves um, were bitten. Um, and it's quite unfortunate because it produces like two leaves a year. So, <laughs> but it's okay. It's still doing fine. Um, but there's an old saying that goes, when is the best time to plant a fruit tree? The answer is, about 30 years ago. So one of the things you guys wanted to see was our little koi wall and how that's doing. Um, ironically enough, the same day we got that comment, the well, one of the posts fell, and now we have half of a little koi wall. But that's okay because still got plenty of little koi. This was the little koi wall that we made a video about a while back. It was called something like how to keep your container cool in a strange way. <laughs> and it really didn't work that good anyway because the sun would get over the wall and it wasn't tall enough. So mainly it was used for privacy on our shower, which we still have some privacy because there is half of a wall left. Um, we do have our backup plan growing as we speak. It's a low clot tree that just came in as a volunteer my neighbor has a bunch of low crots so that tree will be our privacy um, down the road I think what happened is the lilikoi just gets so heavy and we didn't have supports across the top so it just kind of like started going like this it's like a lot of weight the lilikoi is it just gets so heavy and it just snapped right at the bottom I'm gonna need some pruners for this. Like that. All right, so right here behind me is our Rolinia tree of many. We have a lot of Rolinia planted on the property because we love Rolinia, it's one of our favorite fruits. 
Um, but this one is the one that is closest to where we actually live. So in the shipping container, um, it is pretty much like 20 feet away. Um, and what's really cool about this one is that it is the main one that we have gathered fruits from so far. So this was planted about 2017 as well, um, from a, started from a seedling. Um, now where it's located, it's pretty much right behind the sink. So a lot of the water from the sink runs off into this area. We also have a big compost heap um, with the mulch pile that heats the water that's right next to the tree. Um, and the trees right here so often if we have to pee and stuff we go pee right near this tree So I think that's contributing factors as to why it's produced a lot of fruits so far um, There's one on the tree right now, and we're gonna pick it Hello So here she is um, This is pretty much average size a little bit smaller from what we've been getting on this tree so far um, They're really good ready set Mm. These are just the coolest looking fruits. They just look something straight out of a sci-fi movie. And it's really soft to the skin. It has these spikes that aren't spiky at all. They're just very soft. And we're going to eat it right now because it's really good. Ready for surgery. Mm. This tastes so good tastes like lemon meringue pie and with this consistency of like pudding um, with a little bit of a, a bite to it depending on how ripe it is um, this is pretty much how we like to eat it so good there's seeds in it the seeds are um, you can sprout them and plant a tree straight from the seed that's actually how they are propagated easily and what's really awesome about Rolinia is that it actually produces fruit really fast. So they say about three years. This one produced fruit in about two years since it was on the ground. So yeah, it's really, really awesome. Um, the thing about Rolinia is that they require a lot of water. Um, so if there's ever a drought, they don't do very well. Um, so they need to have a lot of water and a lot of love and they make delicious fruit. Here we have our ulu tree, one of three, which we have planted on the property. This one is located very close proximity to our house, so it's about 30 feet away. Um, but this one is a mafala variety. This we purchased at Maku Farmer's Market and we planted it um, about two years ago now. So it's gotten pretty big since then. Um, it hasn't produced any fruit just yet though. We are waiting still. Hopefully it's going to be soon within the next year or so. Um, but it's growing really, really well. We love breadfruit. It's amazing. It's delicious. Um, it is what we want to be kind of like a staple carbohydrate crop here. So this is the mafala. We have an otea 
and we have a ulufiti. So the fruiting period is between late summer and early winter. So right about now is when um, a lot of the fruit trees around the island are producing fruit right now. Um, except for ours, who are not quite there yet, but we are hoping that they will get there very soon. The ulu, the breadfruit, it is a canoe crop. It was brought here by the Hawaiians when they first started living on these islands. Um, and it holds a special place not only in the diet, but also symbolically for every child that was in the family that was born, they would plant one breadfruit tree to ensure that the child has enough food for the rest of its life. So in the comments section, someone was asking about our bananas. Um, when we first started, we planted many varieties, almost 20 varieties, and now we are down to only a few varieties. We got the apple, namwa, ice cream, tuugaya, and mysore. Um, that's it. Everything else has been a thousand finger. gotten bunchy top. We do have 1,000 finger left and Iholena. But those look like they're getting bunchy top, so everything's gotten bunchy top except for the first ones that I've mentioned. Uh, behind me, just have a rack of apple bananas that I'm gonna harvest right now. They seem to be ripe and they're starting to rot up there. They don't look completely matured, but they are turning yellow, so time to take them down. So we got a small rack, but they are ripening. So gotta take them down. A banana? Chop and chop. So here we have one of our star fruit trees. This one is pretty close to our house. This is a Kajang star fruit. And right now it is blooming in flowers. It also already produced some fruit earlier. Um, you can see them kind of hanging off the trees here. We've been able to eat a couple of them, but definitely not in a huge quantity. We're expecting uh, winter time for there to be a lot of star fruit on this tree for us to eat, which is awesome because star fruit is really good. Um, it's really watery and has a really fresh flavor um, and it's not like super dense so it's really nice yeah, so right now there is probably hundreds of fruits on the tree they're really hard to see because they look exactly like the leaves um, when they're green so you can't really tell that they're on there but there's a lot of them in here they'll be ripe in several weeks i'm not sure how long but they'll be ripe soon and then there's all the flowers which the bees are pollinating which means that there's going to be even more fruit after that you're so clean. Nice. <laughs> She's brushing my teeth. Look. So right here is one of our longon trees and we have one other one that's a lot bigger but this one decided to put off some fruit and we're letting it mature and it doesn't seem to be bothering the tree. We still have new growth here. Um, this happens to be my nephew's favorite fruit and he calls them pop outs because when you open them it's kind of like the lychees you just pop them and I think this one tastes a lot like cantaloupe. Doesn't, it's way different in texture and everything, but the flavor is much like a sweet cantaloupe. It's really good. So we have two longan trees. This one is a Sri Shampoo, and the other one is a Bu Q. 
<laughs> a buku. And this one's buku. 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 Sri shampoo and buku. <laughs> buku. So right here we have our vivi tree. Um, this one is our favorite fruit, so we planted five million of them on the property. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, this was the only um, fruit producing tree that was already on the land when we first got here. Now, Vivi is highly invasive. It came from Brazil and it is it was all throughout the property. It's there's still several all throughout the property. We didn't get rid of all of them because um, we use them as a chop and drop. Um, to create biomass for the soil here um, but also the fruit isn't bad we could still eat it and enjoy it Vivi is uh, either hate it or you love it or both I think we definitely don't need to be planting any on purpose even though I just did something else that's cool about the Vivi is that it produces fruit um, kind of like effortlessly um, and the fruit attracts the birds so the birds are drawn away from our fruit that we're trying to grow for ourselves and instead they eat the vivi um, but also the birds um, are part of this whole system and the fact that they eat and they poop and then that poop turns into fertilizer for our soils and our trees all right so here is our pomelo tree um, currently there are three fruits on it, this one being the oldest one. In this area we planted several citrus, um, the pomelo right over here, right over there about 20 feet away is a caracara orange and right behind where Michael is filming right now about 20 feet that way is a satsuma and then diagonally across from here is a Meyer lemon tree. So this fruit here is actually off season because right now it's September, September 14th um, and it shouldn't be fruiting in late summer. Um, it should be about winter time. So these ones here are good in, this, in the right season. These should be ready right around the winter. So here is our tallest coconut and it's really amazing watching these things grow because forever it seems like they're this big and then all of a sudden they'll get this big frond and that's what we got here is like huge fronds on this thing and still got a long time to go these take about 10 years before they produce nuts but it's really cool to see a trunk start to form here and these big fronds so excited about the coconuts here. How many coconuts did we find? I'm pretty sure we got about seven coconuts on the land right now. And is it starting to rain right it's now? It's raining so we'll have to resume once it stops. All right so it started downpouring and we don't think that it's gonna let up tonight at least or the rest of the day. So we decided we're going to make this a two part video because we want to record more of this but it's raining and we're not going to have enough time. So see you guys in the next video.